everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk. My name is John, and today here on the channel, we're going to be talking about 1988's The Naked Gun and its brand new Paramount Pictures 4K Blu-ray. And if you stick around to the end of this video, we will be doing our weekly digital code giveaway, and for our channel members, we will be giving away Mean Streets on 4K Blu-ray. So for those people, stick around to the end, but if you're just here for The Naked Gun review, we're going to talk about that right now. So The Naked Gun, originally released in 1988, is directed by David Zucker, is produced along with him and his brother Jerry Zucker, and a couple other people. Jerry Zucker is probably most known for directing Ghost in 1990, but the two of them, along with another producer, they created the 1982 TV show Police Squad, and that starred Leslie Nielsen. But that show only lasted six episodes, but a few years later, they wanted to get back at it. Leslie Nielsen had a real career revival in the 80s with Airplane, which David Zucker also directed. Captain, how soon can you land? I can't tell. You can tell me I'm a doctor. Leslie Nielsen was really only known for doing you know, straightforward dramas. That's what he was known for. He appeared in so many TV shows and movies. He wasn't known for comedy, but Airplane changed all of that. The slapstick humor, along with the straight-faced comedy that he does, the deadpan delivery. Leslie Nielsen was perfect for this, and he was the king of the comedy world in the 1980s, or at least one of the kings of the comedy world in the 1980s, especially when it came to slapstick comedy. You know, that kind of was fading away. We kind of got more shock value comedy in the 1980s if you look at eddie murphy a very different comedy style but when you get to slapstick comedy leslie nielsen was the king of that in the 1980s you know these jokes are coming at you a mile a minute in this movie right from the time in the opening credits where it just looks like we're on the roof of a police car you got the gumball on top it's driving through the city and then before you know it, it's on a roller coaster it's in a woman's locker room and you're like what the fuck is going on but it's just absolutely hysterical and Leslie Nielsen is perfect this movie. The fact he plays this entire movie straight, everybody else around him is just like, what are you doing? And the only person who ever calls him out for being a bumbling idiot is the mayor. And it took until about halfway through the movie for somebody to go, you're a damn moron. How did you get this far? And then the lines in this movie, they're just so funny. They just fly by. You don't even realize how funny they are. Like, they'll catch you off guard. You'll all of a sudden just be laughing at what is a really dumb joke. And you're thinking, wow, am I still that immature? Nice beaver. Thank you. I just had it stuck. There's a joke very early in the movie. Frank Drebin is driving along in the car with his partner played by George Kennedy. And he's talking about, you know, the love that got away. He's like, oh, man, you know, everywhere I look, I see something from her. And then they turn to the right and there's two, like, I guess, um, I don't know, buildings that kind of look like boobs with nipples on it. So that's what reminds me of him. And, you know, that's a very juvenile joke, but... I laughed my ass off at it. You know, that got me. And there's a bunch of that stuff in this movie. When Frank gets fired later in the movie, he's like, can you believe it? The next time I shoot someone, I could get arrested. Like, those little jokes that just fly by, they, they just keep going. You know, you think they keep doubling down on jokes or tripling down on jokes where they just keep going. Every time Frank pulls up to somewhere, he hits something, he hits somebody. But the best of those is obviously when he's at the police station, the airbag goes off, and he starts shooting at the car as it's driving away, and he's asking everybody, did anyone get a look at the plate? And you get a look at the driver? Like, it's just, it's just ridiculous how stupid he is and incompetent he is. And it's just so, so funny. I mean, the supporting cast in this movie, other than, you know, George Kennedy and Ricardo Montalban, who many people will obviously know from Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. And he's great in this movie as well. But you could just see that, like, him and Leslie Nielsen, George Kennedy are operating at the better acting level. We get Priscilla Presley in this movie. Not really known for her acting. But she does a decent enough job in this movie. She's not asked to do too much. And then a little-known bit actor named Orenthal James Simpson appears in this movie. Um, I don't think he really did too much after this. Nothing that's really too noteworthy, but... You know, he's really, for the most part in this movie, in a coma and just getting the shit beat out of him by Leslie Nielsen, who's just, you know, supposed to be his best friend, but he's just making things so much worse for him. You know, there really isn't too much of a plot to this movie, and that's one thing about spoof movies. You know, you're really there for the gags. You know, David Zucker actually would end up going on and directing plenty of other spoof movies, including Scary Movie 3 and Scary Movie 4 after Keenan Ivory Wayans bowed out of the series, and really the Wayans brothers in general after Scary Movie 1 and 2. When you watch a David Zucker spoof movie, you know, the jokes are all very similar. They just keep coming at you, and this one is no different, but they're all just so funny. Like, if you get a joke that doesn't hit, about 10 or 15 seconds later, you'll get one that does hit, because they just do not stop coming at you but the plot of this movie is just it's just very bare bones the police squad has to intervene in a conspiracy to kill queen elizabeth ii at a baseball game in this movie you know that's like the big third act this movie takes place at the los angeles dodgers stadium you know instead we get the california angels versus the seattle mariners because the dodgers didn't want to be in the movie mainly because of the bench clearing brawl i guess they didn't want to look like buffoons but i mean it's a slapstick comedy 
it's okay to be funny, guys. And I wish they would have done it because it's just very weird as a baseball fan looking at Dodger Stadium and seeing the California Angels logo all over it. But, you know, I'm sure not too many people care about that. I mean, there's many great jokes in that part of the movie as well with, you know, Leslie Nielsen being the umpire. I could just go on and on. There's too many jokes to talk about in this movie in this one video. It's just absolutely hysterical. If you've never seen The Naked Gun or its two sequels, you're doing yourself a disservice because these are some of the funniest movies to ever come out. I mean, I know not everybody is in the slapstick. Maybe I'm just still kind of like a child at heart, but just watching somebody get hurt is still really funny to me. That's why I, every time a new Jackass movie comes out in theaters, I'm there. First day it comes out because at the end of the day, the kid in me still wants to see somebody get hurt. So that's unfortunate, I guess, but I absolutely love it. So I think you guys will love this movie too. But we're also here today to talk about its 4K Blu-ray, and that's what we're going to do right now. Uh, maybe this will refresh your memory. I don't know. It's still kind of hazy. How about this? Yeah, I remember him. I used to see him around. Why do you want to know? I can't tell you that. Well, maybe this will help. I really don't think I should. Yeah, you still don't think so? All right, his name is Nordberg. He's a cop. Here it is, the Naked Gun 4K Steelbook. At the current time in the United States, all you can get is the Naked Gun on 4K in this Steelbook version. There is no slipcover version or anything like that. So if you want the Naked Gun on 4K, this is how you are going to have to get it. And right now, it's about $24.99 at the day of the recording, which is a little bit expensive, especially I've been talking here on the channel about Paramount releasing their catalog titles about $19.99. This one's a little bit more expensive, and I imagine it's because of the Steelbook, but they didn't give us an option for a slipcover, and they give us pretty much everything you would expect from a Paramount 4K release, like we've been talking about Scrooge or Trading Places. This is probably more comparable to Trading Places on 4K. And what I mean by that is this is a very much a middle-of-the-pack Paramount 4K release. It's not any of their top-shelf stuff like Top Gun Maverick on 4K. All the best stuff that Paramount puts out with all the bells and whistles. No, The Naked Gun didn't get that kind of treatment. It kind of got the middle-of-the-pack Paramount treatment where everything is okay, but nothing ever hits those levels of greatness that Paramount has the potential to do. So before we get into that, let's look at the packaging because it is really funny. You know, you get The Naked Gun on the front. Very nice steelbook, by the way. You know, you get all the little sight gags that happen throughout the movie on the back of that, including from the uh, driving instructor scene, which is absolutely hysterical as well. <laughs> I just love the, you know, the straight face of the driving instructor in that scene. It's okay. Normally, you would not be going 65 down the wrong way of a one-way street. Like I said, every joke in this movie pretty much hits, but if it doesn't, 10 seconds later, one will hit. You come inside, and they did give us a second Blu-ray, which I think was from a 2021 re-release of a previous scan. And you also get the 4K in black. So, you know, Paramount likes to do the black 4K disc and the blue Blu-ray disc. I did appreciate them giving us that second Blu-ray disc, and that will have all of your extras on there. So, if you want to watch the trailer or listen to an audio commentary track, it's on the Blu-ray disc. But that is it as far as extras. And as an extra fiend myself, obviously, I was very disappointed by that. You know, comedies kind of don't get the same treatment as like a drama or an action or a horror film where they go behind the scenes and have interviews or have looking back documentaries. You know, comedy just doesn't get the same treatment in the world as regular films. You know, everything, when it comes to comedy, it's also very subjective. Everybody has a different sense of humor. Some people are into very dry humor, while other people are into stupid, dumb humor, I like to call it. Like, I'm a big fan for like Will Ferrell and Jim Carrey comedies. Where they're just over the top, cartoonish, and ridiculous, which is probably why I'm really into the Naked Gun as well and Airplane. So those kinds of movies, I'm also a big fan of the scary movie franchise. I'm just a big spoof guy. Like you know, at the end of the day, I love a good spoof movie, and you know, this is one of them. So I really do love this movie. But I know that not everybody cares about comedy, so I understand why the extras kind of got the shaft on this one. But I would have really liked at least something. We didn't get nothing really. A commentary track and the trailer. That's nothing. That's just to, you know, fill space, really. And when you compare the Blu-ray to the 4K, the Blu-ray that's packed in here is actually really not that bad. It's pretty decent, in my opinion. You know, it's, um, you know, if you have the previously released Blu-ray, honestly, I don't know if you need to jump to the 4K. Because when you're comparing them, yes, the 4K has Dolby Vision and HDR10. And just to make a quick note, uh, the Dolby Vision, you know, this rarely happens, but it does happen. I thought the Dolby Vision actually was a little bit better than the HDR10, mainly in the early scenes. So when you're comparing them... When I put the HDR10 on, when I was checking that one, it just looked a little bit worse in the early scenes, mainly in the Beirut scenes, and there's some of the early scenes, like when they're at the pier. I thought that that looked so much better in Dolby Vision than it does in HDR10. And I'm, you know, I always try and tell people that they don't have to have Dolby Vision. Like HDR10 is fine, but sometimes Dolby Vision does look a little bit better than HDR10, and this was one of those cases. So I mean, Dolby Vision is if you have it available, definitely make sure you turn that on because uh, you'll probably get the most out of it. But it is an 
uneven 4K. I honestly think this is very similar to Trading Places as far as the 4K goes, where some scenes are just going to absolutely blow you away. Mainly the third act, where they are at Dodger Stadium and they're outside. All the outdoor scenes just look pretty much gorgeous. There's just some scenes where the skin looks just slightly off, like when they're at the press conference. You know, when they're talking about Queen Elizabeth coming to the United States, that's the scene where we get Leslie Nielsen going in the bathroom with the microphone. That just looks a little bit off in the 4K, but, like, nothing is really bad. It's just that times you'll notice that certain scenes will jump and it'll just look just stunning, like what you would expect from a Paramount 4K Blu-ray. And then other scenes, it just looks a little bit too faded. The color looks a little bit off. You know, the HDR10 and the Dolby Vision still are going to brighten us up a little bit, give us more of a color gamut. And, you know, we're going to get that wider range where it can hit those deeper blacks while still maintaining the brightness. You know, the Blu-ray is obviously going to struggle with that, but the 4K really doesn't have too much of an issue with that. It's just, I guess maybe it's source material. I feel like sometimes Paramount is a, a victim of what the source material is and they don't want to really adjust it like manually. So they just throw the HDR10 and the Dolby Vision over it. And if it just looks bad in certain scenes, it looks bad in certain scenes. Because that's just the best guess I have. Because you will just notice that something is going to look great, and then something is just going to look a little bit off. But again, nothing looks bad. Nothing is offensively bad about this 4K Blu-ray. It's just, it you know, you'll just see some inconsistencies. And I think I said the same thing about trading places on 4K, where I would say like 70% of the 4K is great, but about 30% is just a little bit off, but just... You know, nothing terrible. But this is actually honestly what I would have expected from this. I still think it's a big jump from the Blu-ray, but not enough to justify the price tag. And because that Blu-ray is also not bad, it's really not a bad Blu-ray at all. You don't have to run out and grab this on 4K Blu-ray. Also, Paramount loves to release these at one at a time. So next year, you might get the Naked Gun two and a half and then the next year we might get the naked gun 33 and a third you don't believe me they do this every year with the scream franchise we're getting beverly hills cop 3 this year after we already got beverly hills cop 1 and 2 released on different years from each other so paramount loves to just reach in and take as much money from us as they can they like to just release it over and over and then eventually we'll get a box set like in the fourth year like we just got the scream trilogy on 4k last year in a nice big box set but it took until they finally released them all to get that so i imagine next november or december we might get the naked gun two and a half on 4k because all three of these movies are really funny uh i really think that the first one's still the best but i still think that they're all really good so i will get that when it eventually comes out but you know i would have liked a nice trilogy 4k box set instead of having to wait because I do think we'll eventually get them. But also the audio tracks that are on here, the DTS HD 5.1, it's the same audio track from the previous Blu-ray. They did not do anything different. It's a good audio track, though. And again, it's a comedy. But there is a good amount of score in this movie, a good amount of action scenes. Everything is mixed very well. But obviously, I think they could have really sprung for Adobe Atmos track, and it would have really been appreciated. I think they could have done a lot more with this audio track. It's not bad, but it's just nothing special. And I really think there was the potential for something special here, just because it is an action comedy. And I really think it would have been just fun to have like the bells and whistles of a good audio track in here but we didn't get that but paramount always does give us plenty of audio options and plenty of subtitle options which i always appreciate the accessibility options and they did a great job with that but as far as the 4k overall how would i rate this on a score of 1 to 10 i would still give this 4k blu-ray a really solid 8 out of 10 nothing special but nothing bad as well you know when this drops down to like 1999 i think that would probably be the perfect sweet spot i can't imagine it dropping too much lower than that because it is a steelbook release but you also get the blu-ray packed in which a lot of time that doesn't happen it came with a digital code you know the 4k is still an upgrade over the previously released blu-rays and really the lack of extras drags this down for me just because i love extras but i understand why they're not in here and you know i can appreciate that but i still think it's a solid pickup so if you do decide to pick this up i do not think you'll be disappointed with it but it's also friday and that means it's time for our digital code giveaway in every single video that we put out on friday we ask you guys two digital code giveaway questions all you have to do is answer one of those in the comment section below as long as you do that, you come back to Monday's video, we put your name on a magic wheel, we spin that bad boy two times, the two names it lands on, they have their choice, the digital codes that you've seen on your screen before you today. And we're talking comedy, we don't get to talk comedy too much, I wanted to know what is your guys' favorite 1980s comedy movie? And I also wanted to know, what is your favorite spoof or satire movie? Because technically, I think RoboCop is a satire movie, so that could fall under that. But I want to know, what is your favorite spoof or satire movie? So let me know that in the comments section below, and then just don't forget to come back to Monday's video. And for our channel members, it is time for us to put your name on a magic wheel and see if you are going to be the winner of... 
this sealed copy of Mean Streets on 4K Blu-ray. So for the, anyone who is a channel member, I put your name on a magic wheel, and I just spun that wheel, and I already know who the winner is, but you don't yet, so let's go to that right now. <laughs> Alright, congratulations Frank Rodriguez on your win of Mean Streets on 4K Blu-ray. Don't forget to reach out to me at my email address or on Twitter or X, whatever you want to reach out to me, just direct message me. Let me know where to send this bad boy to you. For the other four people who didn't win, I just want to thank you guys all so much for being a channel member. It really means the world to me. We will be doing more giveaways always for our channel members going forward. I don't know if they'll all be as nice as Mean Streets on 4K Blu-ray, but I do want to do as many giveaways as possible. You know, maybe give away my old Blu-rays that I don't really use. Just give them away to you guys just for helping support the channel. I really do appreciate that, guys, so much. And for anyone who doesn't support the channel financially, I really still appreciate you guys all as well. It really means the world to me that you would be willing to check out one of my videos. And if you want to just continue to support us, the best way to do that is just by simply liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and then just getting out in those streets and telling your friends about us. And we will be seeing you around.